This is John D. Ruddy and I'm going to be taking you around some of the areas in Dublin where the Easter Rising took place. And here, along Pierce Street, is the birthplace of Patrick Pierce and his brother Willie Pierce. Liberty Hall was the headquarters of James Connolly and his Irish Citizens Army. It's slightly taller. The original building looked much different. And it was actually shelled to bits by the gunboat Helga during the Rising. And it was here on Easter Monday, Pierce and Connolly, the Irish Citizens Army and the Irish Volunteers gathered together, headed up Abbey Street towards Sackville Street to capture the GPO. Here we have the GPO, the General Post Office, on Sackville Street, well it's now O'Connell Street. The Irish tricolour flying above it today, but back then it would have been the Union flag, the flag of Britain. And it was here that the Irish Volunteers and the Irish Citizen Army, led by Patrick Pearce and James Connolly, and all them other guys, ran in, fired off a few shots, took the GPO. And at 12.45pm, Pierce stepped out and read the proclamation of independence. Irish men and Irish women, in the name of God and of the dead generations from which she receives her old tradition of nationhood, Ireland through us summons her children to her flag and strikes for her freedom. And they did. They hung a tricolour along the top and a flag, a green flag, proclaiming the Irish Republic on the other. You can still see the bullet holes. Here we have the spire today, just across from the GPO. But uh, there was a point when, at the time of the Rising, this was Nelson's Pillar, a symbol of British victory, obviously. Um, that didn't uh, stay after independence. Well, actually, it stayed until 1966, and someone blew it up from the top. Now we have the spire. It was from here at the Parnell Monument, at the top of Parnell Street, at the very top of Sackville Street, uh, that the first counter-attack came about where the British soldiers lined up a whole pile of mounted lancers, a whole pile of guys on horses and galloped the horses all the way down Sackville Street as far as the GPO and it uh, wasn't very effective um, they all got shot, one of them one of, one of the horses actually lay there dead for the rest of the rising the first battalion under Ned Daly took control of the four courts and it was their job to prevent movement of troops the Royal Barracks. The Royal Barracks, which is today one of the National Museums, was one of the main bases of British soldiers in Dublin. The second battalion under Thomas Macdonough took control of the Jacobs factory on Bishop Street. Now, of course, this isn't the original building at all, but this is where it was. From here, they were able to control surrounding streets, prevent movement from Portobello Barracks over that way, and they were even able to snipe at the castle just over the far side of that building. Well, a couple of blocks. Dublin Castle was the headquarters of British rule at the time. And when the rebels tried to capture Dublin Castle, the gate was closed and the policeman told them where to go. So they shot him and soldiers from the inside began shooting out. So the rebels retreated into City Hall. But little did they know that Dublin Castle was not very well defended at the time. The 3rd Battalion under Eamon de Valera took control of Boland's Mill. From there they controlled the railway station on Westland Road. bridge further up the Grand Canal. Here along the Grand Canal over Mount Street Bridge was the site of the Battle of Mount Street Bridge. British forces were coming up from Kingstown Harbour which is now Dunleary and they made their way all the way into the city centre as far as here. 
onto Mount Street Bridge. But rebels had been posted up in these, well, not these buildings, these buildings are newer, but the buildings that were here, and they had a clear shot right across the bridge, and it was an absolute kill zone. There were highly inexperienced troops, the Sherwood Foresters Regiment, they came all the way up here and they just kept coming, kept coming and just getting shot. There were over 20 killed, over 200 injured. Uh, it was a massacre. It was an absolute massacre. And the thing was, there's plenty of bridges further up. The order was to take Mount Street Bridge at all cost. Despite there being several, several other undefended bridges, which would give them perfect access into the city centre. It was here along North King Street that a lot of British soldiers actually broke their way into houses and burrowed their way through. They actually ended up murdering a lot of people on the way through claiming that they were rebels. It's too dangerous to travel along the street. The South Dublin Union, which became St James's Hospital, was taken over by the 4th Battalion under Eamon Kent. They were to try and prevent the Kingsbridge Station, only over the way. British reinforcements arriving from Athlone and the Curra arrived up into Kingsbridge Station, which is now Houston Station. They'd try to make their way up along the River Liffey, but they'd be stopped, held back, by Sean Houston and the Mendicity Institute and his detachment. The Mendicity Institute isn't the same building that it was back then in 1916. The Citizens Army under Michael Mallon and Constance Markovich took over Stevens Green and captured the Ducks. And when they couldn't handle the British forces in the Shelburne Hotel, they retreated from the Green and headed into the College of Surgeons. Still has the British coat of arms on it. And on the Wednesday morning, the gunboat Helga came all the way up the Liffey and shelled Liberty Hall. Of course, Liberty Hall looks a lot different today. It's completely destroyed and rebuilt a little bit taller. Trinity College was taken over by British forces under General Lowe to house the soldiers. And it was right along here, there would have been loads and loads of artillery howitzer guns directed down Sackville Street towards the GPO. Here alongside Finlater's Church and Parnell Square, which is ironically now the Garden of Remembrance, guns 18-pounder howitzer artillery guns. From here they were able to fire right down on top of Sackville Street. Destroyed the place. Here we are inside the GPO. Of course, none of this is original. This whole place was gutted with fire. This whole building was absolutely shelled. You can see old photos. There wasn't even a roof left in the place. The rebels held out for five days in here, but eventually, once the inferno got too intense, they had to evacuate. They planned to make their way from the very top of Moor Street all the way over there, and to try and make it all the way up to King's Inn Street and the Williams and Woods factory up there in the top. They'd get as far as here and link up with Ned Daly's Four Courts Battalion and break out of the city to the north. But they didn't even make it as far as here. So when they decided to evacuate, probably would have broken out the side of the building, headed towards Henry Place where they'd ultimately get into Moor Street. Now there would have been British barricades the whole way along the top there. It would have been machine guns, it would have been death to just go right over here. But somewhere along here, Having been gunned down by a machine gun fire along Henry Street, the O'Rahilly dragged himself to a doorway and lay there dying in a pool of blood where he would eventually die. The only leader of the Rising to be killed during the fighting. And it was from Henry Street that the rebels managed to get their way along here over to the bottom of Moor Lane and on over to the buildings at Moor Street. Just off Moor Street was probably where the rebels broke into the buildings to burrow their way through towards the top of the street. It was along Moor Street they burrowed their way through the buildings as far as number 16. Quite apt number actually. 
16 Moore Street. It was 16 Moore Street that Elizabeth O'Farrell remembered coming out of. And it was here that they decided to surrender because too many civilians had died. So they sent Elizabeth O'Farrell out the front. And she walked with the white flag all the way up to the top to the barricades. Here along the top of Moore Street, between Moore Street and Great Britain Street, which is now Parnell Street, uh, that um, Elizabeth O'Farrell marched up to the barricades, which probably would have been set along here. You would have had guys along with uh, rifles, machine guns right along here, and she walked right up to them with a white flag and uh, offered the first sign of surrender of the rising. It was somewhere along here that Pierce accepted the surrender order from General Lowe. It was unconditional surrender. And it was here at Kilmainham Jail 14 of the leaders of the Easter Rising were executed. May 3rd, May 4th, May 5th, May 8th, May 12th. And it is here at Arbor Hill is the final burial plot of the 1916 leaders. Their names are emblazoned along the ground and the words of the Proclamation of Independence along the wall in English and in Irish. Thomas Clark, Thomas McDonough, Patrick Pierce, Ned Daly, Michael O'Hanrahan, Willie Pierce, Joseph Plunkett, John McBride, Con Colbert, Eamon Kent, Sean Houston, Michael Mallon, James Connolly, Sean McDermott. And it was here in 1919 that those elected to the British Parliament under Sinn Féin convened together to declare Irish independence. And this is the Garden of Remembrance. And here now, where once guns fired down upon Sackville Street, is the Garden of Remembrance, remembering those who gave their life in the cause of Irish freedom. If you enjoyed this video, come to our show, McCaig and O'Brien Present The Rising by Joe O'Byrne. We'll be bringing to life the events of the Easter Rising on stage through song, dance and plenty of drama. We'll be in Liberty Hall March 9th, 10th and 11th as part of the Five Lamps Arts Festival, as well as the Marketplace Theatre Armagh March 4th, the Mac Belfast March 15th and Tyne Theatre Dundalk March 18th, Riverbank Arts Centre Newbridge March 19th and Angrenon Theatre Letterkenny March 23rd. To keep up to date, like and follow Comotion Media on Twitter and Facebook, as well as John D. Ruddy, artist, actor, educator. Thanks for watching, guys.